Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today, and welcome to our third SoapCon Live panel right here in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. SoapCon Live is the first Comic-Con for soaps. And remember, please visit SoapConLive.com for the full schedule and to purchase virtual meet and greets, autographs, and video message messages from everyone you see here with me today. And don't forget to stay tuned for the next panel, the General Hospital panel, coming up right after this. One Life to Live made its TV debut on July 15th, 1968, and aired for more than 43 years until January 13th, 2012. And then it went on to the internet with Prospect Park in 2013. We all know that the show was created by legendary writer and producer Agnes Nixon. One Life to Live began as a 30-minute show and was expanded to 45 minutes in 1976 and then to an hour in 1978. The Kramer family centers on the dynamic relationships of the long-running character, Dr. Dorian Crane, who made her debut on the series in April of 1973 and, most, and was most famously played by the one and only Robin Strasser. Kristen Alderson joined the cast as Star Manning at six years old in March of 1998. Laura Bonarigo took over the role of Cassie in 1991, and Cassie DePiva joined the cast as Blair in 1993. And Gina Tagnoni made her soap debut as Kelly Kramer in 1995. It is my pleasure to welcome these ladies right here to SoapCon Live, Kristen Alderson, Laura Bonarigo, Cassie DePiva, and Gina Tagnoni. Hi, Hi, ladies. <laughs> so nice to see you all. And I'll, I'll say it again. We know fans are so excited to see you today. Um, you know, they've been talking about getting the Kramer women together in the locker room for a long, long time. Yeah. When was the last time you four were together? Ah, in the I same mean, room. Oh, in man. the same room? I don't yeah. know. You on, on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, 90s, early 2000s. I mean, <laughs> looking around because we had, you know, for Laura to be there in the same room. I think that I've seen Cassie quite a bit through the years. Kristen, but the four of us, the four of us, we did the photo that you show with Robin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That might yeah. actually, yeah, be the That's last, last one. one. Or it wasn't some interview we did, but I remember that show. So yeah. we did what an do you think it is about the Kramer women that generates this excitement? If you could put your finger on it, what would you say it is? Well, I think it's because Dorian was the cog in the wheel. <laughs> she, had the, she manipulated this family. And, you know, I watch old YouTube um, clips and I am so snarky and so hateful <laughs> for that I think, oh my gosh, but then if something bad happens, I'll pull together because we're family because that's what Dorian would want me to do. You know? <laughs> Cassie was always such a good, good person that Blair always really felt like a shit. You know? There you go. <laughs> and, and poor old Star, she just, you know, the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you were particularly very mean to me. Very oh, mean to me. Oh, terrible. Kelly. Kelly, Kelly just couldn't catch a break. She was so nice. She just, you know, she tried. She tried and she just kept kind of tripping over herself a bit. But, you know, actually, I think Kelly was one of the nicest characters I ever played. I got kind of oh, snarky. Wow. Up. Yeah, like with Dinah and, 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 well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dinah was not a nice yeah, Dinah was not a nice gal. No, but so I think <laughs> Kelly, Kelly to me was like the lightest soap character I ever played. Ka I think Kathy, Blair, Blair was just jealous of Kelly because she was younger and prettier and could do, you know, could get all the guys. <laughs> right. right before this, I was just watching a YouTube clip of, um, of Cassie and Gina and like Blair and Kelly fighting and being snarky. And I sent it to Cassie and it's so good. I have to send it to you guys. And she <laughs> just sent it to me. I'm going to watch it after. Oh, it's great. It's Cassie, great. did you know when you auditioned for Blair that she was going to be that mean? No, I did not no. know that she was mean. And I didn't know that she was American Asian. I didn't know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know a lot. All I knew is that I had watched... Um, one Life to Live growing up, and I knew that there was a character Cassie on it, so I just thought, oh my gosh, I'm destined yeah. to be 
show. And so my roommate, my first oh, roommate, roommate was was oh, Laura. So right. We were roommates. We were dressing roommates. It was great. In a dressing room that size. Yeah. Yeah, New York City no, dressing smaller room. Than that, smaller than that. <laughs> All I remember, Cassie, is you rocking in the rocking chair. Now I have two. Yes, always. Always. Yes. And I think of you every time I get in my rocking chairs. I'm like, keep moving. She yes. was always yes. moving. Yes. Laura, Laura Bonarigo, same, same yep. exact connection. Do you have a love yes. of rocking chairs, Cassie DePaul? Yes, and actually, it's kind of probably an addiction. And I was <laughs> visiting my parents at home, and my mother said, well, you know what? I never had to worry about you when you were a kid, when you were a little kid, because I had one of those rocking horses and oh. I would pillow on the head and I'd rock myself to sleep. I mean, from two on. So if they had one probably an adult size, it would be over here in the living room. Oh. <laughs> For sure. Depending on how many, we had more lines. If it was like a busy, busy yeah. day, it was rocking. Yeah, it was going. All the time. Going. Rocking it. Yeah. I, I, remember, I remember just staring at you one day and saying, now, now, Cassie, why do you rock so much? <laughs> and Cassie's just, this is how I process. This is how I process. <laughs> <laughs> it's used to make Robin crazy. Wait, wait. So did you have one at Guiding Light too? I'm sure you did. Oh, I probably did. I had to listen. When I was sick in the hospital, my son walked my little rocking chair two miles across Manhattan oh. and put it in the hospital room oh, for me. My awesome. God. That's, That's beautiful. Awesome. You you raised a good one there. Yeah, I did. It's a good egg. Cass, what? Uh, sorry, G. What do you remember about auditioning for Kelly? This is your first daytime. Yep. yep. Nathan Fillion. Uh -huh. uh, with him. I just remember him being so tall and so beautiful, mm -hmm. but just warm. And thinking, if I can just focus on this guy for the next five minutes, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> just trust. And I did. And I remember the cameraman. I remember Alan Needleman. Mm -hmm. Just so these specifics. I remember the set being so warm and kind. And I remember walking away saying, well, if I don't get this job, that was the loveliest screen test I have ever seen. The loveliest. And um, I, I, was, I got the job and I was thrilled. It was my first big job, in the, you know, first real job um, that was significant. And um, I was thrilled. That's and amazing. Then, then that, was, that was my first family. How I learned how to even do soap opera was one like to live. It absolutely was my foundation. That you took it to every other role. Yes. Yeah. 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 Best training yeah. ever. Yeah. Yeah. Nathan's a hottie. <laughs> that, that, that's <laughs> Kristen, six years old. Mm -hmm. Do you even remember like getting there for the first time or mm -hmm. what you had to do to get the role? <laughs> I do. I remember. I remember. I had my hair up for the audition, and they asked me to put my hair down. <laughs> I mean, I, that's very dumb and specific. But um, so but I remember thinking, I'm I'm gonna have a bump in my hair now. Like, what? <laughs> I let down. But they recognized me because I was Molly and Annie on Broadway, and they had seen the show. The casting director. Um. So thank thank God. I think that that's kind of what got me the role was that they saw me kind of be snarky little Molly um, and being mischievous. And so, yeah, that, that, that helped. And then my first day on set, I just remember it being huge, like just the biggest set ever to me. Well, I, I would think to a six year old that that yeah. castle would look oh, yeah. like, you know, one life to live taped in a, a, a castle. Yeah. And, and for you, Laura, what do you remember? Well, I screen tested with Bob Woods. And ah. that was because I was originally paired with Bob Woods in the Sarah story. And, and, and I know Bob is known for his, uh, you know, comedy and, and prankster. Was he a prankster in that? Do you remember? I don't think during the screen test. I think during okay. the screen test, it was more subdued because he didn't know me. Mm -hmm. Right. And even though for me, I'd been on another world for a few months, this was... This was a big test for me as well, like Gina's. And I remember 
really thinking about um, I kind of rem had vague recollections of the whole space, like hair and makeup and then being walked upstairs. And it's a huge sound stage your first time there. So that was really like, you know, and then just trying to stay very focused on what I needed to do and Bob and connecting with him. I remember really connecting with him. That was the most important part for me. As, as Gina said, staring at Nathan, I was staring at Bob. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to connect with him. That was the whole Thanks. point of it. That's a handsome man to, to stare at. Um, I love uh, one of our fans, Rob Berger, said, Kramer women were my favorite family. Yay. Well, but one of you said earlier, and it might have been Gina, it might have been Cassie, trust. Hmm. Talk about trust. You know, you all work together scene after scene. You work with different men. I think you know, it might've been you, Gina, saying with Nathan, trust, what What does trust mean as oh. an actor? Everything. 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 <laughs> Everything. Um, you know, you are working on the fly. You are, have, it's, it's not only are you working on these scenes that you've just digested, you know, for some the day of or the night before, and you are selling this wonderful story and breathing life into it and you have lines and those lines are cues for your partner. And that's exactly who that other person is. It's not an actor as much as it is your partner and you're in it together and you are producing a show together. You all are doing it. So if I mess up, we kind of all mess up. You know, we all have to start over again. And, and that's a tremendous amount of pressure over a period of time. And we know what it takes to do good work and we all did it and it is amazing. Um, we were with each other every moment, every moment we were brilliant and every moment we weren't brilliant or messed up. And we, and we can feel it. You are so close and connected to these women and or scene partners. And it just, it's so brilliant and beautiful and something you never forget, just something you never forget. So the trust, it, but it comes from trust and it comes from listening and staring into this other person's eyes. <laughs> I say, God, I hope you remember your line. I and I'm so glad I just remembered mine. You know, <laughs> there's so many. I I remember, yeah, doing a scene with Cassie where I had to tell her that my baby had died, and I mean, it's a very deep emotional scene. And she just l held me, uh, held my hands in her hands, and she was looking at me so deep into my eyes, and she's going like, Okay, like tell me like, what happened, what happened, and I just like. You, there's nothing else that exists in the world except for that partner that you're in that moment with. And she just had my back and she was helping me through that emotion. And she was like, mm -hmm. like it was almost yeah. you could see Cassie, but she was also Blair. Like she was yeah. like, you got this. You got this. <laughs> I know that you, 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 you know, in, in training and, and education for acting, you might learn that, but is there a moment that you actually realize where you you knew that trust was like the, you know, be end and all of like, is there some and moment? Trusting yourself first and foremost, it's that process of trusting yourself with the material and that partner you trust that they will bring that very thing that brings out something very special in you. It's such a chemistry. It's such a chemistry. Right. I would, I would be a different person when I was acting with Blair and, and Laura um, on screen. Yeah, yeah. I think we lost it. Feel like, oh, go ahead, Cass. I, I feel like, you know, we listened to each other. Right. You no, know, okay. it takes good listening, I think, to be a pretty good actor because you're, you know, you're not just acting, you're reacting and watching old clips and stuff. We would talk over each other and not that it wasn't scripted, but it almost seemed like we were ad living a lot. Yeah. And we really weren't. There yeah. is such there was such a connection that, you know, after, you know, two or three episodes, you kind of get into the other character's energy. So when you're learning your lines, you can understand that. So, you know, I'm sure Laura and Gina and Kristen all know, well, Blair is going to be a bitch here. So I guess I better be ready for that. You know, so you kind of prepare yourself. Right. But, but you never know what's going to happen on the fly. And we really did work on the fly. But I think our genuine respect and love for each other as actors also trans 
it, it, it was translated into our characters. I mean, mm -hmm. I just adored the Kramer clan. You know, whether we were in Dorian's kitchen, you know, bitching and moaning, or whether we were dressed up or somebody, you know, was having a miscarriage or whatever it was. It was just, it was, there wasn't a wasted moment with the, with the Kramer women. And it was written very, very well. Yes, it was. It was written well. I think that the trust also came as, you don't always know in the moment, um, you know in the moment, you don't know when you're going on to set, like what's going to happen today. And so <laughs> you're discovering it together and it's, and you're working it, you're working it every scene, boom, next, next, next scene, next scene, next scene. And then you leave the sound stage and you go, wow. Yes. Or you, like when we cut it, we would be able to say, we did it, right? Like we did it. But I will also say that there wasn't a lot of time to gloat or celebrate. Right. There was always more work to be done. Yeah. So, you had to go home and learn the next day. Yeah, we right. got home. So we were all like, great, 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 great. See you tomorrow. Like, yeah. or see you next week or whatever yeah. our yeah. screen was. And you have Mom, to let that chip go of that today's show and put right. the new chip in. Right. Right. Alan Robin would always say, we'd be in the kitchen, you know, in Dorian's set, and we would do our dress rehearsal. And then she would go, okay, girls, we've got to Kramerize this now. Go, <laughs> yeah. And she did. Yes, she did. She did. Where she going? And we would kind of go, Oh my God. And I used to hate it when they would go, when she would say, we're Kramer girls. I would just, I mean, I really, Cassie would go, Oh my God, do we really have to shove this down everybody's throat? We right. say it every episode, you know, right, right, right. Look at it. You know, it's it. like, but look look where we are, you know, look where we are. It, it worked. Well, let's speak of the, you know, the cog in the wheel. E each of you, must have a different relationship with Robin. Can you just all talk about Robin in, in your life and, and working opposite her? Kristen, why don't you start? Oh my gosh. Um, well, she, I mean, from the very beginning, she taught me so much and she's just, a, it, you learn so much when working with her. And so to be able to work with her from such a young age was so amazing. Um, but even off camera, she was just, um, She's so nurturing. She'll she's I'll, she'll give you the shirt off her back. She's so um, she's so giving in that way. And we've stayed in close contact. So actually, my favorite moments with her have been after the show. Um, I mean, while we were still on the show, she and I like would go see a movie together every once in a while, which was so much fun. And then um, then I did an off Broadway show in New York and stayed over at her house every Wednesday night for I mean a year. And we would call each other roomies. And I would get in <laughs> from the show and she'd go, okay, just put a hat on, on the, um, on the knob. And when she wanted to wake me up early in the morning, she would sing at the top of her lungs to get me to wake up. <laughs> She's still very Dorian, even Robin. Um, there are, there are definitely uh, Kramer women moments beyond the show, but we're still so incredibly close to this day. I talk to her all the time. And um, she actually lives close to me now. And I just, I drove her from Pennsylvania to New York to get her COVID shot. So that's how close we are. Oh, <laughs> wow. Nice. wow, good for you. Yeah. Laura? That's oh gosh, I knew you were gonna call on me. Um, <laughs> Robin, I loved working with Robin, but true to Cassie Dorian relationship, it was always Ooh. like this love hate thing. like. It always was like there was this part of me that absolutely adored her, and there was this part of me that just was like, You're driving me utterly crazy. <laughs> I'm just being honest, and we we were in the same neighborhood on the Upper East Side for quite some time. So I was in her home, she knew my kids, and then we both lived. I have a condo in New York, and we we're in the same building for no. a long time. So I was seeing her all the time. Wow. Same building. Was that coincidence? It was coincidence. Wow. So, and then I would know her as Robin, and I would know her as Dorian. Right. And then it was like, there was always, she would be in my home, she'd be giving me advice, and then I'd be in her apartment, she'd be giving me advice. <laughs> I just remember all sorts of like, she's driving me crazy. I adore her. She's driving me crazy. I adore her. It's such a mother-daughter relationship. Yeah. It was so mother-daughter. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I love that. Gina? Uh, well, Robin Strasser is, <laughs> is one of a kind, one of a kind, uh, broke the mold. 
Um, first of all, professionally, the very thing that she taught me was this. She said, when you take on a role, put your fingerprints all over it. Ooh. And that I absolutely have taken to heart. I, I have done that, hopefully, in everything I've done. And, you know, I've done a lot of, not a lot, but recasts. So when I would take on the recast, I would, you know, obviously pay attention to what was there, but go ahead and forge ahead and put my, my stamp on it. And I think it was some of the best advice I've ever been given. Um, personally, I, I wish we were in more contact. So I make a vow that I will make more contact with her because I miss her presence. I miss, I do miss her and I wish that we could hang out a little bit more, but you know, now things are opening up a bit. Maybe, maybe in New York. And she's I'm vaccinated, not. thanks to Kristen. And now she's vaccinated. <laughs> and, and really hang out with her. No, Cassie, but I, I think in our first One Life show, I, I think this came up, but somebody, and it might have been another show, but somebody talked about Robin and like you talk about being in her kitchen, but she was so particular, like about maybe even Kristen told me this about the napkins in the kitchen that. Dorian wouldn't have the, you know, like green per se. Like she knew what Dorian would have oh, as yeah. her props in her kitchen. She was very thorough with her character. She knew it inside and out. She had, you know, La Boule was La Boule. And that was all. <laughs> oh, so she, she, was, she, was, um, she was amazing as Dorian. She's an amazing, one of the smartest women I have ever met. Uh, one of the most generous. Yeah. Um, I wish that she were a part of this discussion because she'd be sitting there going, oh, stop it, stop it. She'd hate it. Listen, I put on makeup today yeah. because I thought maybe she was going to be on this. And I thought, she is going to give me such shit if I don't <laughs> present myself. I, I, I blew my hair dry. I put on a kind of a shiny shirt. Otherwise, I've got my flannel shirt right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that is genius! Oh, uh, Cassie, you, you and Robin have stayed so close too. Oh Sandy yeah, Robin and I've been very, very close, and she, yeah, she was by my bedside when I had leukemia. Amazing, and it'll make me cry right now. She was unbelievable, and I will never, ever forget it. Well, fans are asking, how are you holding up? How are you doing? Feeling? Well, I'm just getting old. You just look gorgeous. Stop no. it. Look, I'm good. I'm very. I'm. I'm healthy. I'll be hit my five year um, remission mark in July from leukemia. So praise yeah. Bravo. Oh Bravo. God. That, Bravo. Bravo. Wow. That is wonderful news. Did, is did any of you attend Super Soap, Cassie? You did, right? Yeah, yeah. I, think I attended. Did, oh, well, what times. was that like? Since we're talking about you know SoapCon today and doing SoapCon, what, what were those experiences about? like? It was so oh my gosh. Super really? Soap was Disney's. Uh, they they like, flew all the soap people. Amazing. From the I, I ABC shows. It was an amazing experience, right, Cass? It was really, really wonderful. I would say there's probably 10,000 plus fans there. Wow. Yeah. It was so over. So, over. Yeah. And they, we would, you know, it would start in from nine o'clock in the morning and end at one o'clock in the morning after we had done, put on a big show, a, a concert right there at the um, in the middle of the park and with fireworks and everything. It was really amazing, one-on-one, -on -one, wonderful fan event that, um, you know, I don't know what happened to ABC. I think they lost their mind when they canceled One Life to Live and All My Children. And I think the fans would absolutely sign on to that and agree. daytime lineup on television. The yeah. strongest daytime lineup. Super yeah. Soap Weekend was their number one seller. So they had... Um, that and their Star Wars weekend were when the only times that the park was completely sold out for the weekend. So they, I mean, they made so much money off of that. And we, it was from the beginning, you would have an autograph thing, then an interview, then another autograph. And like Cassie said, the concert at night, it was just so great to be so connected to the fans and in a vacation setting. And oh, great. It was my favorite thing ever. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It was so special to even be invited. It was just great. Yeah. 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 Gina uh, Freeman said, Kelly had a sense of humor, humor yeah. and Dinah and Phyllis, not so much. No. Uh, Love no. Kelly with David in particular. Hilarious. Uh, remember David. David Vickers. Yes. Oh, Tuck. God. Tuck Watkins. 
Just funny. So he is funny. funny man, a funny man. Gina, um, you are very, very comedic. You are really, really, you were great with Jimmy too. You and Jimmy were funny together. Jimmy is a funny man. <laughs> well, you're a funny lady. <laughs> um, thank you. In fact, Laura and I share a common friend, Penny Templeton, who yeah. we adore. Uh, she is a teacher in New York and everywhere, but um, he said the same thing. She said, Kelly was so funny. And, I, and she goes, oh, well, let, let's dive more into that. And I said, yeah, I think so. I, I, I need to be lighter these days. I need to laugh more, you know? Um, she was kind of dingy, Kelly. Kind I, of remember, I remember her being so silly. That's what I remember about you playing that role was this like, you were so young. Yeah, you I was. So young. And I remember thinking of you as so young. And that's why Kelly's so young. Right? Yeah. It was adorable. The clip that Cassie and that Kristen sent Cassie, because Cassie just sent it to me. You look so young. I could see. I don't know what year that is, but that I just oh. watched a, a 30 yeah. seconds of it before we went live. Yeah. So good. And the writing was great on One Life to Live. I don't know what it was. It, you know, the New York soaps had such just power, powerhouse actors. And we just, I just felt there was such a different vibe and, and in a way that you, it was tangible, you know. Whether it was, you know, maybe the drama sometimes during the day, I felt like when I was watching it, like it had a little bit more grit to it. Um, and I loved it. I think in daytime in New York, you're, you, you have talented actors on every soap, but you're also in that cast surrounded by so much theater people, so many theater actors yeah. that it, it, it just it made it. You know, everybody on every show in New York, just okay. it, it, it was okay. something special and something well, special in New York. All the yeah. day players that would come in or the, the guest yeah. stars. Matt, remember working with Marion Seldes? Right. Mm -hmm. right. She was our great, she was our grandmother. She was the grand dame of New York theater. I know. What about Cherry Jones? Remember Cherry Jones was on the show? Yes. And, Ch I mean, Cherry Jones? Jones? Cherry, yeah. No, oh, get out. I love yeah, her. I can remember the character. Well, Cherry Jones, know. my God, she is a powerhouse. Um, who else we have? We had uh, Michael Bublé, but as Michael Bublé. Who else? We have, who um, Who married Bo and Nora? Oh, Little Richard. Thank you. Little Richard, Little Richard yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did some great things with them. Didn't they have beautiful guests? Music and everything. You had some great uh, yeah, um, casting. And then you had the live week. Oh my God. And Cassie, Cassie was, was Cassie. Oh my God. Well, our fan Freeman just said Cassie should have won an Emmy for those performances. Yeah, she should have 100%. I didn't even get nominated. No. You did? You mm -hmm. didn't? Were you, were you all frightened? I, I had what you call fear stink on. <laughs> I was so nervous I would be sweating and be like, I'm beginning to stink. <laughs> <laughs> Fear stink. Oh, I remember just having to rehearse a lot, a lot, a lot. I I was pretty young. I was probably like only 11 or 12 when it happened. And they had so many scenes with uh, me and, and Ty Treadway. And we had so much dialogue. So he came over to our apartment the night before just to run all the dialogue because it was, yeah. It was scary. It had to be live, yeah. That's a, that's a lot of pressure for an eleven-year-old. I, I, I mean, I think it's a lot for a thirty-year-old. But I mean, yeah. my God. But I just remember they had a cover on the magazine of I forget Soap Opera Digest, one of the uh, magazines, and uh, it was for Live Week, and they asked me to be on the cover with everyone. And I remember standing there posing like, yeah, like Live Week, let's do it. Like I was up for the challenge. I was very excited. <laughs> Remember, and someone said uh, Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg was on the show. Yes. Yeah. I don't think Jeff was there, but yeah. Um, Christian, what was it like having Cassie and Roger as parents? Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What did you say, Cassie? That's crazy. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, Cassie is like a second mother to me, and just she's the most warm individual you could ever meet, and we just had a bond instantly and that's it's never gone away i mean there could be so much time in between cassie and i seeing each other 
and you pick up the phone or FaceTime and it's like no time has passed. Um, <laughs> I used to sleep over her house all the time. Um, I used to, I mean, just talk to her. Actually, when I was deciding whether or not to move home back to Philly and I was living out in LA, I went over to Cassie's house, hysterical crying, going, what do I do? How do I do this? And she I said, book a plane ticket right now. <laughs> you need to go home. Yep. You did. Yep. And I did. I listened to her. I said, what do I do? She goes, you're going home tomorrow. I said, tomorrow? She goes, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yep. She's, awesome. She's the best. And, um, right. and Roger was very intimidating. Like he was, he was taught, he was, I think the reason that we had such great chemistry was because I was intimidated by him and it like, fe- mm-hmm. I don't know, it worked that way. I, I th- <laughs> you know, sadly, I think mo- not, not in a bad way. I think that's just Roger. A lot of people feel that, right? He's so professional. Um, Like Cassie and I had such a relationship outside of work and Roger is a very professional man and we have such a great, um, he's, he's so great to work with professionally. Um, but yeah, I think because it, I was a little nervous sometimes going in and I wanted to be on my A game. I think that, um, you know, with Todd and star, he wasn't a very, Todd wasn't very affectionate to star and, but yet he loved her so much and you could tell. And I, I think it just all worked and that's why it was so kind of magic, you know, their relationship. That's great. And, and we're, we're going to go to fan questions momentarily, but Cassie, what, what is it like? Um, do you remember when you met Jimmy for the first time? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly do. It's a secret. <laughs> well, we, um, I was supposed to screen test with Max, but he was on, Jimmy was on vacation. So I screen tested with um, John Leprino. So, I had met Jimmy the first time, was not on the set of One Life to Live. I was singing at a club, the Whaler Bar in New York City, and his brother on the show was singing with me. And this story was kind of crazy, but a record label had come to hear me sing. And Jimmy comes up with this, you know, with this cocktail, like, I'm not a I'm not a shill, but I want to tell you that I really love that song you sang. And I'm like, I'm thinking. What's this asshole? I'm like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's here? Anyway, cut to cut to two years later or three years later, I'm on the set. When like we have already gotten the part of Blair and he comes in. And you know, that's that's kind of how it was. It's like, oh yeah, that's that guy. No, that's um, I didn't know that, Cassie. Cassie, that's- were you on Guy mm-hmm. Light when you were performing at the Whaler Bar? Yes. I was I on the- probably was there because I used to go to the Whaler. To, 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 I, I used to go to see all of you perform at the Whaler. I, you just like that is a blast. I hadn't heard of that bar in years. Was, was, that, was it a bar? Was it just like a musical bar that type of thing? Um, it I, was I, a hotel at Medicine and Fifth Avenue. Okay, I, 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 I couldn't tell you, but I used to go. Zimmer performed there. Wow. Cassie performed there. Wow. Yeah, fun. That's where I'm. Kim is asking, Cassie, would you like to go to GH and work with Roger again, not Blair and Todd? Well, she's asking, yes, I would like to work. So, <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy? Yes. You ask any actor if they want to work, the answer is always yes. 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 We would all love to work. That's true. It's true. Um, Laura, did you choose to leave the business and, and start your coaching business? Or is so- there... It- yes and no. Um, so I went through a, a difficult divorce and I had two kids. And at that time, soaps closed in New York and I would have had to go to L.A. Had I gone to L.A., I would have lost custody of my kids. So it was a difficult decision. I stayed in New York. I raised my kids. I became a coach after three to five years after that, when everyone was like, what are you going to do with your life? And I was like, I don't know. And yeah. they were like, you should coach. So I, I started training and doing that. But I still did commercial work, <clears throat> and I still do I've commercial commercials. Work. I've seen you with your um, – it's a, a drug medicine. Yeah, they're whatever. all drugs. They're all drugs. Or banks. They're wonderful. Laura, do you see the comment? Laura, aw, thank you, Mary. I, uh, I would love to be in soaps now. My kids are grown. They're launched. I could easily go back to soaps. Um, 
or something like that. I'd love to. It'd be great. That's awesome. Well, yeah. So looking at, you know, the TV canvas is enormous today. Sure. Because of all the streaming. Is there a show you all watch that you would kill to be on right now? I'll start. I would kill yeah. to be on anything on the Home Rock channel. I oh. love those movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a romantic. There's, they remind me of the soaps. I love them. Oh, I love that. I would love to be so in there. Great. Oh, that's cute. Love that. Cass? Anything. <laughs> I'm with Cassie too. Okay. I, okay. I love FBI. I love Blacklist. I love. I love that all. I love the yeah. procedural stuff. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the soap stuff, but not really. It's actually a little different. So I kind of find that a little intriguing. Procedural. I just thought, I just thought of the show. You. You know how they're going. Oh yeah. Season. That's a really fun show, and it's yeah, very fun show. Fun. I have to still catch up on season two, but a great show. Yeah, I feel like I could be a, a character, a little supporting. Oh, character. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Penn Badgley could do do uh, Kristen Alderson some harm. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of our fans was asking if Star and Todd are returning to General Hospital next month. Um, I <laughs> wish. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in Pennsylvania, so <laughs> yeah. Um, Tony says Gina Tanyoni, the queen of manifestation. Ooh, yeah. Good. And Michael like says to Laura, did you enjoy the Loon Lake story when Alex tried to drown I Cassie? I remember being so cold in that lake, so cold. That's what I remember about Loon Lake. It was very exciting, and I hadn't heard very many. Is that me? It's okay. We can hear you. Okay, great. So it was fun. It was really a fun, but it was my first big on location job with the soaps. And so it was, um, I remember just being freezing. That's what I remember. It was so cold in the water. Yeah. <laughs> And who did you play in Another World? You mentioned it earlier. So I played a character named, um, mm, <laughs> Lindsay. Lindsay. I played Lindsay and I played with um, Ricky Paul Golden. Oh my gosh. And uh, Ricky's great. Uh, the character was Matt, but I don't remember the actor's name. And then. Uh, I think it was Matt as well. Matt Corey. That's right. And then. Yeah. It was funny because the character Alina Karakanidis or something like that. She and I both screen tested for Cassie. I got oh, Cassie. Alina Karakanidis who yeah. ended up yeah. on the right. Yeah. So I got I got Cassie and she took over Lindsay. Oh, so, oh wow. Yeah. Ooh. That's funny. Yeah. Lisa says, "How do these women not age?" Oh wow. <laughs> clean living. <laughs> Real good, clean living. Beer. <laughs> I <don't> remember. <laughs> Ashley says, do, do the ladies remember how amazing Robin was in the scenes when Dorian thought Cassie was hurt or had died, but it ended up being Melinda? Oh. Dorian's screams of panic and fear gave the Ashley chills. Yeah. I, I just watched that one on YouTube before the <laughs> While I was getting ready, I looked up all like old Kramer women YouTube videos. And that was on there. And she was, yes, yeah, she was so amazing in that. Um, and you two were snarky with each other, of course. <laughs> and uh, and then and then Laura, you came in and you said, I'm fine, I'm alive, but it's Melinda. And then Gina, you were amazing, like crying over your mom passing. And it was, she was an I'll send you guys a link to that too. <laughs> <laughs> that, you that link? <laughs> Kristen's, Kristen's a YouTuber, we can tell. Yeah. She is a YouTuber. Um, She's more like a historian is what she is, so it's great. Oh, yeah. That, Gina Allen says, when Gina left y and I tuned out for the last time. 
Oh, there's a plan for you, Gina. I know. And I got to tell you, so, so many people have said that. And, you know, I take that as such an awesome compliment. <laughs> but, um, you know, you know it, I, I, I miss my friends there uh, so much. And I miss the crew. Um, so I send my love out there and um, I'm still in touch and, you know, phone texting and I do, I miss them. They were really good people, really good people. Love the cast. That's great. Yeah. Dwight is asking Cassie, a Louisville, Kentucky native. Can you talk about the Opperland theme park days? Yes. It was 1980. <laughs> I was in um, uh, between my freshman and sophomore year. I performed at the in the park and sang on today's country roads. And then while I was there, I got to sing on the Grand Ole Opry. So it was really great. I was 18 and I just was, you know, I thought, I mean, I can get paid to do this. So yeah. that was kind of the start of the professional world. Amazing. Fun. I mean, just knowing that you sang at the Grand Ole Opry, like, it's like, wow. I know. Cool. I know, it's pretty, is, yeah. pretty, pretty amazing. I've led a very exciting, fun life. And the soap world has been so important to me yeah. because I've met such fabulous, fabulous people that have touched my life and changed my life and made me a better person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's exactly Jen says, Star was one of my favorite characters on One Life. Ah, oh, thanks. It's, it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because I think like a lot of, and she had such a crazy arc too, because she was su such a sweet little girl, then a really big brat. And then she, <laughs> and then she uh, matured. She had, such, she had <laughs> such great role models. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of our fans is asking, how's your brother doing? Can you give us an update? He's oh. doing so well. Um, thank God he just got a clean scan um, this past Monday. So- great. Um, yeah, so it's been a couple years now that he's cancer free. And so hopefully, thank God, you know, it continues. And we're just always super grateful for a clean scan. So, yeah. 100%. Yeah. T Tony just said, Kristen and Cassie absolutely tug my heart when those Star Blair mother daughter scenes. Oh, thank you. Well, you know what we can do, Kristen. We just have to have our own little YouTube channel. We'll just record it. I'll be that old, decrepit. Come in here, Star. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this is, Kristen. But Kim says, "Do you miss working with the snake?" Yes. <laughs> I actually just, and everything. I just talked about the snake literally this week. <laughs> ago. Um, my friend was saying that he is like deathly afraid of snakes. I said, "I'm not," because I got to work with one when I was. <laughs> he was a professional snake. I mean, it, he wasn't venomous. And so uh, it was the snake that Star released in the courtroom with Todd um, and when I was super young. And so the snake was just, I was walking around downstairs uh, with all, around the dressing rooms holding this snake. And I just, I loved that. It was so sweet. So now I'm not afraid of snakes. I don't know. I grew up not being afraid because of those scenes. <laughs> yeah. Gina, who was Kelly's loves on, it was... Joey. Joey was your first love. And Joey, that was Joey, Joey. And that was Nathan first, and then Nate, Donnie Jeffcoat. Yeah. Then Tom. Tom. Um, Tom. Tom, Tom um, yeah. Della. Del yes. Del it's it's Irish. Yeah. The sweetest guy ever, and I, I'm probably not saying his last name right. Declan. Declan. Possibly. Um, we had three major Joeys. Uh, Max. She had a little rendezvous with, which was. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Working with Jimmy. I don't know what it was about Jimmy. By the way, tell Jimmy I say hello. I don't know where he is, but he's got to be there. Right? Hiding somewhere. Tell him we all say hello. Yes. yes. Um, Jimmy would bring out such a silly side of me. And uh, and Cassie was great. She'd always just egg us on. Yeah. Um, you know, and I was a, and David Vickers. But but my loves, I have to say, were always the Joeys. They casted such good ones. Yeah. I'm going to try to get Donnie in the locker room soon. Ooh. He, 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 he needs, 
the reason we haven't is he needs to get his baby to sleep. He told me. <laughs> he had a baby, which I've been like following him on Facebook. Isn't yeah. that awesome? Yeah, I'm so beautiful. I know. Um, Jacarius Cassie, is. A I'm sorry, Cassie. You were with Kevin at one point, right? Was it? Was yep. it? Yes, you, Cassie. Oh, Cassie. oh Cassie. yeah, she was with Kevin. Kevin, I, Kevin I, Stapleton that played it, or was it the uh, Tim Gibbs? Did, was Tim, it Tim? Gibbs? He was with Kevin Stapleton, right? Yeah. Both of them. Both of okay. them. Both were great. Both were great. What do you remember about both? I love Kevin Stapleton and I still keep in touch. I love working with him. He and I had so much fun and he was really spontaneous on set. And Tim Gibbs, um, I just remember the worst part about Tim Gibbs was I knew him from um, the Waltons. You know, like I remember him when he was little. He was on the Waltons? I didn't realize. Yeah, he he wow. was the little one. So that was kind of like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but he was great. He was great to work. Great to work. He was really and he was really attractive and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, tough, mm -hmm. tough jobs you have to look into. <laughs> those those soap boys are all good looking. Mm -hmm. They're all good looking. Well, you, mar you married one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was it like working opposite James, Jimmy? Um, James, Jimmy, James, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> you know what? I love being married to him. I loved working with him, but I, I just don't think husband and wife should work together. But I love him anyway. I love him anyway. I mean, he directed, I know you directed you, Gina, and you, Chris. Yeah, um, he was a director. Yeah, he was a great director. Very smart. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. funny. Uh, Cassie and Gina, one of our fans was asking, Jacarius was asking, what was it like to work with Laura Wright? Laura Wright on Guiding Light. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she is a force. She always has been, always will be. She, I just remember her energy. Her energy was very um, expansive in a good way, very bright. Um, you knew when she was in the room. Um, I enjoyed working with her because she connected. She really connected very easily. Um, and she's such a pretty woman, such a pretty woman. So I, I remember us all working our butts off on Guiding Light. We worked a lot together. So very good memories. And Cass, did you work with her at General Hospital? Only at General Hospital. And she, just as Gina said, she is a force, such a talent and very, very generous and you know, really just a, just a true natural actor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's a very, um, a big I like, her. I like her as a person. Too. Right. Exactly. She's, she's great to have a drink with. She's great. She's to have good a drink peeps. With. She's good. Yeah, peeps. She's good like, peeps. Yep. Yep. She's like you guys. Kristen, talk about your men on the show. You were talking about Cole earlier. Oh yeah. So <clears throat> talk about, uh, well, okay. So Brandon buddy, <laughs> like Cole and, um, I dated him in real life. And then and then Connor Fallow played Travis of uh, when I was like 13 and I had my first kiss on the show. I dated him in real life. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh and there's a third one. Well, oh, okay, Nick Rope. <laughs> but I didn't date him in real life. Um, <laughs> Mary, so that, you know, to a yeah. Um, and then I, uh, and then I went to General Hospital, worked with Chad, and dated him in real life. So, ah! <laughs> <laughs> like, this... so boys, like you said, mm -hmm. that is great. That is great. Um, what is it like having your first kiss on television? Oh, it was. Oh my gosh, that day was so exciting. It was on, on location in Central Park, so that was incredibly exciting. It was on a bridge, Bow Bridge, like the famous Bow Bridge in Central Park, and. Um, it was my first kiss in real life, and I, it wasn't his. He was all, he was too cool for school. But um, so it was a well, I mean, the fastest kiss you've ever seen in your life. But it was so cold, and Larry Carpenter was directing, who was like a an uncle to me. Um, and and all the all the crew there were, you know, they watched me grow up. So all of them were going ah. <laughs> 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 um, but it was it was very very exciting, very cute. Um, yeah. 
One of our fans, Ron, said these women have such great chemistry and obvious affection for each other. And you can certainly see that. You can certainly, certainly see that. Um, is there anyone who you wanted to work with in Landview that you didn't get the chance to? I always wanted to work more with Bob Woods. He he just is one of the funniest men, you know, that I had ever worked with, and I always just craved to be around him. Such great energy, everyone loved him. You know, don't you guys? I mean, he's just the best. The best. Life I mean, life. Laura must have cracked up all the time. Laura, you must have laughed. Yeah. Oh, Laura, yeah, he was. And, he was um, you know, who else was a lot of fun. Um, Bob Bob Kramer Kramer Bob Kramer. Them, Kramer. Um, them. Yeah. Kramer. Yeah, he was I a good working with him. I was so lucky to be able to work with him. You were. He was very generous. Now he became You a married reverend. him. He was a reverend. Yeah, he, I was a reverend. he worked opposite for like seven years. Wow. I knew a long time we worked together. Yeah, you guys were buds. You had good story too. You yeah, know, we had you great had story. story. You had Sloan and you know, you had you had family at that time. Which was yeah. really, really, really good. I loved working with him, um, that actor. I poured a lot of tea also. <laughs> yeah. While the Reverend was listening to everybody else's issues, right. I poured a lot of tea. <laughs> Hilarious. You're absolutely right. I poured many, many cups of tea as the Reverend's wife. But working with, with Bob was fabulous. I was yeah. very fortunate. He was good yeah. looking, he was professional, he was talented, he yeah. cared, he was giving. He's he's, funny. Funny. he's good friends with Jimmy. They still keep. Oh, they send friends. love, send love. Oh, I, love you. Love you. Those ladies, two I could talk to you for three hours. You, you ladies are a delight. Thank you for being here. The fans, like I said, have been asking for the Kramer women forever. Maybe one day we can finally technically get Robin and do it again. Yes, 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 definitely. Kristen will have to, you know, Kristen wrangle, her. The, wrangle the computer her. and uh, help her out. But I will. <laughs> stay safe, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you, you all. Guys. God bless. Good seeing you all. Yay. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Remember, if your questions weren't answered during the Q&A today, and if you want to chat more personally with my guests today, get an autograph or video greeting. You can visit SoapConLive.com to purchase them. Thank you to Laura, Kristen, Gina, and Cassie, the Kramer women, for joining us. Stay tuned for the General Hospital panel at SoapCon Live right here in the locker room at 7 p.m. Eastern with Lucretia Lyon, and thank you for watching. COVID-19 COVID has been a, a real B-I-T-C-H to, to all the actors and, and the arts out there in general. And so for this year, it's just been, it's been awesome. I've had a real uptick in some of the biggest roles that I've ever had um, and most important roles, really. Can you share what those roles might be? Um, I've had to sign non-disclosure agreements for oh. both series. But I <laughs> wow. one series is, series is for Disney+. Plus. Um, and so I'm working on that. And one series, I'll give a hint, is in its final season. Um, I'm very, very proud uh, of of the work that I've been able to do in the last few years, stepping outside of daytime, obviously a daytime oh. has been a huge
huge part of my career. It was the very beginning. It was the foundation. I started when I was 17 years old. I'm 42. It was only a few years ago, four or five years ago. But you really have to, no matter what you know, job you, you're in and you're starting a whole new medium or, or a whole other career, you, it takes time. The whole thing takes time. You have to re-evaluate. You have to restructure your team. You have to know, you know, what kind of projects you want to go after. And I realized at that point, I, you know, I, there was specific blinders of the kind of projects that I wanted. And it was TV, but it was prime time TV. And and so it's it's taken time to, um, I don't want to say convince, but actually make the rounds to the casting directors. Let them see me again. Get familiar with me again. Um, see me outside of um, daytime television and uh, you know because you know daytime <clears throat> is is such a great storytelling uh medium it's you know there's a new play that's that's every single day monday through friday and it's it's great it's it's a great way to hone your skills keep your skills start off as an actor it, it's been an absolute blessing to me i mean i had seven nominations while i was doing it uh, I have always enjoyed uh, the challenge, 60 pages a, a day sometimes. It's amazing. It's an amazing medium. Hi, I'm Candace Mack of JLJ Media's Audio Soap Forever in a Day, Take Two Radio, and Soap Party 411. Here are some reasons why I love this genre. Name another genre that's been around for 90 years. I'll wait. Mm-hmm. It's gone from radio to television to digital back to audio. By the way, all you fandoms out there, yeah, sometimes to DC, Marvel, and Star Wars fans, you're welcome because Soaps provided some of the greatest characters from there that's gone on to the fandom. Just saying. It's also a genre that made us believe in true love. After surviving cloning, time traveling, saving the world, vampires, don't forget about being buried alive. Did I mention cloning too? It's also a genre that's always been there through the good, the bad, and the WTF moments. It's always there, just like family. But felt the need to definitely break outside, at least for the time being. And, you know, who knows? Anything's possible down the road. But um, right now, I'm, I'm feeling good about uh, where, where I'm at. And I'm just glad that I was able to do daytime as long as I have. Yeah, because there's no better training ground as an actor to get into the boot camp of acting. I think it was Wally Kurth that called it. They're the blue collar workers of the industry because because you are in the grind and that training can take you to places. I mean, you look at, you know, the late Chadwick Boseman and Michael B. Jordan. They were were on all my children around the same time you were and they you know decided to take that leap just like you have and and it's so great to see people and you see that training in it because you can't do that daily grind without that training from all my children or general hospital and it's just so great to see because a lot of these actors you may you know recognize from your favorite movies but if they're say australian or british they were on soaps there <laughs> it's not just the american soaps guys all these people are getting training canada has their own soaps too all those cw superheroes they were on those they were on heartland <laughs> yeah Hi, I'm Amanda Kimmel. And I'm Shannon Coach. And we're the hosts of Pier 54, a general hospital fan podcast. Each week, we release two new episodes. On Mondays, we recap last week's episodes of GH. And on Thursdays, we do the Port Charles 411, where we dig deep into different subjects like characters, storylines, chat with other fans, and even cast members. You can find us on most major platforms, including iTunes, Stitcher, Pandora, iHeartRadio, and many more. Or you can check out our website at pier54podcast.com. You can also find us on most social media channels. Just look for Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. We look forward to you joining us every week. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. No, it's so yeah. true. I mean, and, and, you, and a lot of people don't realize even nighttime serials, mm -hmm are soap operas it's it's oh yeah they're shot in a studio they're shot on multiple cameras it just happens to have a slightly different feel um and a little bit more money behind it yeah. each so 
episode, obviously. Um, so, you know, but but it is. If the story the storyline is a, it's a story, the story is a story. It still plays the same way. It's got a cliffhanger. You got to wait till the next episode. But we're just pumping out five times a week, maybe even up to eight, nine episodes in a week. The fact that it even still can be as good as it is, is it's kudos to all the actors, you know, because everybody's out there just just grinding. It's a it's a grind. Um, and, uh, you know, that's you know, that's one thing I have a lot of respect for is the writers. They, they were able to push out that much material. Soaps keep keep living. They keep going and they just continue to keep growing. Um, you know, there's a the fan base. You know, it's funny. You watch when one show has gone off the air, the fan base goes over to this other show. I mean, like stuff that, you know, like people, they're like, well, I used to watch that one, but when it went off the air and you went over to this show, I moved over to this show. And so it's nice because it's still that same family and, you know, you, you know, and, and people, they just, you know, they want to be told that daily story. And uh, again, I'm just glad that I've been part of it for so many years. Watch the doctors is moving and you're going to love the new location. Download It's Real Good TV to join your friends from Hope Memorial. Available online and all your devices. Already a Doctor subscriber? Then there's an email headed your way with a coupon code for free access, plus special bonuses for starting your new account on It's Real Good TV. Haven't gotten your email? Don't worry, you will soon. For details, visit itsrealgoodtv.com. I've been consistent uh, within the top 20 for TV and film on Apple for my podcast, um, Real Conversations with Jacob Young. And I've been, it's just been great. It's been fantastic. It's been such a whole new sort of wheelhouse for me to get into. And um, I'm really thankful for the people that have been a part of the podcast. Because, yes, of course, Eva was on the podcast, LaRue, she was on there, Cameron Matheson. I've done some of the soap folks um, and a little bit of everything uh, musicians, country music stars. Uh, and we're just kind of hitting the tip of the iceberg. There's so many more to go. And, and uh, as the ratings and uh, the downloads just keep popping in, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get bigger and bigger people or just, you know, variety. Because that's the whole thing. I, yeah. I don't want to be focused on one thing. I want it to be a little bit of everything. I want to touch because, you know, people that might not know me from soaps, you know, they, they might find me on a podcast and go, who the hell is this guy? And because it's because I'm talking to an NFL star somebody who's you know, made a career in NFL or NHL or Major League Baseball. So I kind of want to touch a little bit of everything and give everybody the opportunity. It is a mental health podcast. You know, I ask some of the hard questions, lifting the veil off of the shame of mental health. I know I've dealt with my own battle of mental health for years. And um, it's kind of interesting, especially with COVID, just how many people have become more open. I think COVID has been a blessing in a lot of ways because people have been home and had a lot of time to think about uh, their lives and evaluating, you know, gosh, I miss, you know, just going out to a baseball game or going out to visit my friends. Regardless, there's lots of great advice. And on the other side of the podcast, of course, I have the um, manager of the Boys Town National Hotline, uh, Chris Hallstrom. She gets on the, on afterwards. Uh, so it's a second part. It's part one, part two of every every episode. And we talk about some of the good points and we off, you know, Boys Town, which has been around since the Great Depression. Uh, Boys Town was an Oscar award winning movie with Spencer Tracy and Mickey Rooney. Uh, it's all about Father Flanagan, who Spencer Tracy portrays. And during the Great Depression, a lot of these boys were sent out to go fend for their themselves. They were seven, eight, nine years old. But if they were lucky enough to find Father Flanagan, he took them in. And he took him in, and um, and they've been going ever since. They've been saving children, boys and girls, for over 100 years. Amazing. And so that that was how this particular podcast came about. So I'm I'm uh, I'm so proud to be a you know part of part of Boys Town and Boys Town a part of me. It's um it's uh it's not only is it's not only part of me you know, as far as being a foster kid at, at one point in my life, but, um, but able to hopefully save a life coming to, you know, this, uh, in a couple of weeks, I have, uh, Adam Jacobs, who was Aladdin on Broadway, Oh yeah, in the Lion King. He was Aladdin on Broadway. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to be on the show in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. It's real conversations with Jacob Young and it's, it's anywhere and everywhere you can download or find a podcast, whatever source Google, play or whether it's Spotify or Apple podcast or 
absolutely everywhere. And eventually, uh, I'm going to release the unedited videos <laughs> to YouTube. So I've, it's only been an audio podcast, but I have all the videos as well. So eventually, I'll be releasing all of those uh, on YouTube, um, of course, with the permission of all of my guests. But uh, <laughs> but there but there's some there's some some fun moments that of course that are not on this podcast. The future of television is here, and it's Real Good TV. Download the It's Real Good TV app now on Roku, Apple, and Android devices, or stream online at itsrealgoodtv.com. And get instant access to hundreds of shows from five different networks. That's right, all of your favorite shows in one place. Free to download, free to watch. Watch on demand or stream one of our live TV networks in real time. Start watching today, because It's Real Good TV. Well, thank you so much for doing this, Jacob. And thank you so much for being a part of SoapCon Live. When can they meet you? Well, so so yeah, so I guess May 9th is the is the date, right? Is it Mother's Day? Yes. Yeah, so Mother's Day, May 9th. Uh, everybody, you know, who's interested, come come one, come all, come hang out with me. Um, looking forward to meeting everybody or seeing familiar faces that I've met over the years. And of course, we've got autographs that are going to be available, right? And we've got some video greetings that we can do. Yeah. So it's those three things. You can meet Jacob on Mother's Day. That's May 9th. We have autographs with Jacob as well as video greetings. And if you guys get those video greetings in by May 7th, you can use promo code Mother's Day to send that greeting to your mother on Mother's Day. Oh, well, we all like savings, don't we? <laughs> And it's worth it because you're going to yeah. be hanging out with me. Um, of course. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for having me on. And I'm looking forward again. Everybody, come out. Meet us.